Welcome back to the range. I will tell you from the beginning, I am very concerned about how this video is going to go, but I think it's still gonna be very cool. Now this idea isn't new, but there is something new about the way that we're going to be doing this. Right in front of me, I have a shotgun that's around the 1960s era shotgun. So it's not very old, but it's a fairly old shotgun. This shotgun is from NR Davis and Sons. It's again, an um, older side-by-side, -side, which means a side-by-side -side shotgun means that there are two barrels. This also has two individual triggers that can fire each side individually. And what we're going to be able to do today is is try something a little bit different. This is a 50 BMG, most commonly used like the Barrett 50 cal, which is a very, very powerful round. I'm not sure why God decided to make it that a shotgun round actually fits perfectly into a 12 gauge hole, but that's what we're going to be testing today. So this is the side-by-side -side shotgun I was telling you about. And again, this is a 50 BMG. This one's fake, so you can hear that it's not a loaded real round of ammunition. I'm going to put it in, you'll see how it fits all the way through. So we're actually gonna see how that's going to be able to see against the actual back of the firearm and see if it goes off. So again, this shotgun was purchased for 40 bucks and it hasn't been shot in quite a long time. So what we're going to do first, just to make sure everything's functioning, we'll put two rounds of 12 gauge birdshot just to make sure everything's running smoothly. And then after that, we're going to escalate to the 50 caliber round. So we have the shotgun on a sled that we're going to clamp in place to make sure it stays put. And then as we walk over here, we're going to guess that it's gonna impact around here. Now this not, might not seem like a lot of distance, but the thing is that since it's not going to be seated in a proper chamber, it might not have the same amount of pressure you might be expecting from a regular 50 caliber round. So what we're going to do is we're gonna keep it close. We'll see that if it does go through and it goes through well enough, we'll see how it impacts. Also, will it be able to pass this target or maybe it will stop or maybe it'll be completely inaccurate and hit somewhere else. So this will all be kind of a part of the test because I'm very curious to see what's gonna happen. It looks like we had a decent primer strike. So after maybe six or seven tries, there were a few different issues that we came up with if, uh, with this shotgun. It turns out that the barrel on the shotgun, since this is potentially very, very old, was, I guess, worn to the point that the 50 kind of almost slid down the barrel as opposed to seating in place, which could be a result of multiple different things. But because of that, as well as also the impact of the primer, which might be a little bit squishy, it wasn't able to do a full penetration of that primer, causing it to actually fire. So we're gonna shoot it with a rifle. So this video went very sideways in, in regards to what we thought was actually going to happen. So as it turns out, it seems like the round that we were using had a primer that wasn't functioning correctly. And unfortunately to be able to get more ammunition was not possible in that area. So we were kind of stuck with what we had, but I still wanted to see something go boom. And if the primer isn't functioning, it doesn't mean that the powder inside isn't still able to do something a little bit more. So what we did is we set this up on a target stand and then we were kind of maybe around 10 to 15 uh, yards away and I took a shot with my rifle just to be able to figure out the drop that I needed because this is obviously going to be a very small impact while it was still lodged in the barrel and we couldn't remove it. So we wanted to make sure that it would be a kind of a decent impact to make sure that it would still fire. Um, we set it up, we took the shot, and of course, the closed camera angle that was going to be there, the, the camera overheated and it shut off literally right before the shot took place. So I have the last few seconds before the gun actually went boom and we missed the actual impact of the round. But what this turned into was a crazy different, crazy crazy different video where we were trying to even remove the casing to be able to see what it looked like. So at the range, we were kind of tapping at the top of the casing to try to see if we were able to remove it. And we kind of bent it inwards. We didn't know where the actual projectile was. We didn't know where the projectile that we shot into it was. And we were just trying to remove the casing to be able to see what actually happened. I ended up going to my friend's shop and we started trying to remove it. We had to use every tool available to try our best to not damage the casing so we could actually get a good look at it while also being able to go through the very thick metal and the very solid metal that the barrel is using to be able to actually get into it. So we actually see that it was able to fit very, very nicely. I'll try to show you guys that up close, but 
the bullet um, impacted the just low of the primer and it looks like it bounced against the actual side of the barrel and then went back into the barrel and then who knows where it actually went after that point. So that actually was very cool to be able to see. We ended up removing it, we polished it, um, tried to clean it up a little bit just to be able to get a good look and it's such a cool thing to be able to look at and be able to keep just as a kind of like a, a cool thing that happened in the video. So. Ultimately, this didn't go exactly the way anticipated, but I think it was a very cool experience and cool thing to be able to watch and be able to go through. Also, being able to remove it by itself was a whole process in and of itself to be able to do. And uh, ultimately, we did get it out. Not really the results I expected. I do want to try this again. We do have a few other ideas of how we're able to make this go off. But unlike the other videos I've seen in the past with regular 12-gauge shotguns, this did not perform the way I thought where you kind of just put it in in replacement of a 12-gauge round and it goes off as smoothly. Now, again, it could have been an issue with the primer, so I'm going to see if I'm able to get more 50 cal in the future to be able to actually try it again and see if we're able to duplicate these results. Uh, maybe it was the shotgun that we were using. Um, again, maybe it was the ammunition, but let's see if we're able to do that again in the future. This is Raziel Cohen with NDFTraining.com. Thank you for watching.